Ever wondered how to transform your graphic design game? Today, I've got seven advanced steps that will not only elevate your creations, but also set you apart in the world of design. How do you ensure your layouts captivate and your typography speaks for you? Ready to level up? Let's roll. Hey there, my name is Jan Detters, also known as Typeful, and on this channel, I help logo and brand identity designers to make their design life easier by sharing my experiences and knowledge. In today's video, I want to share with you seven advanced steps to improve your layout and compositions. First, and I think the most important one, is use of grids. It helps with organization and alignment. Grids provide a systematic structure, helping designers organize elements on a page cohesively. This structure enhances visual hierarchy and makes it easier for viewers to navigate the content. On the other hand, it also creates consistency. Grids serve as a backbone of consistency. They provide clear guidelines for spacing, alignment and proportions. This ensures a polished and professional aesthetic throughout your design. Let's take a peek into the poster I designed for MONH, Museum of Natural History, where I use grids to set up the poster, banner, and social media posts. And because of using these grids, it is easy done since you know how to position the main elements on different surfaces. Efficiency. Designing within a grid streamlines the creative process. It offers a framework for placing elements, reducing guesswork, and allowing designers to make informed decisions about placement and alignment quickly. This makes the design process easier. I want to show you now how to set up a grid in Illustrator. It's quite simple. First of all, begin by defining the margins. Margins help frame the content and provide breadth space. Then determine the numbers of columns and rows based on the complexity of your design. For A4 or A3 sizes, a common starting point is a 12 column grid, but this can vary depending on the design requirements. 12 columns give you a lot of room to play with the layout. You can split it into two parts and even three parts, but also into six and 12. 12 columns are also often used with magazines and newspapers. And then lastly, the gutter grid. Establish a consistent gutter between columns and rows. The gutter helps create separation between elements, preventing visual clutter. Typically, the gutter is around 1 8 to 1 4th of the column width. In Illustrator, there is a handy feature to create these grids. Also, I want to share with you a site I found via Behance where you can create your own grid systems with. And eventually, you can download these grids as a PDF file and use them in your design as a guideline for your grid. I will share the link with you in the video description. The second element I want to talk about is the use of typography. Creating hierarchy in typography is important for the viewer to guide their eyes through the information in the right order. A fundamental principle is to create a no noticeable contrast between different text elements. A practical guideline is to consider doubling or halving your point size when transitioning between headline and body copy. For instance, if your heading is a bold 30 point font, opt for a subtle 15 point for the body copy. For a more dramatic effect, experiment with three times or four times the point size. This ensures that each textual component plays a distinct role, guiding the viewer seamlessly through the narrative. The text weight, when altering font weights, always aim to skip one weight, shift from light to bold, or from medium to extra bold. The key here is contrast. Subtle variations in weight might go unnoticed, diminishing the impact of your design. For headings, consider employing a bold weight to command attention, while opting for a lighter weight in the body copy to enhance readability. The interplay of bold and light fosters a dynamic and visually engaging reading experience. And then you have personality. Typography is not merely a collection of letters. It's a vessel for conveying personality and mood. The choice of typefaces, styles and letter spacing contributes to the overall vibe of your design. Consider the personality you want to project, whether it's modern and sleek, classic and timeless, or whimsical and playful. Every typeface has its own unique character. Leverage this to align with the essence of your message. Incorporating these nuances into your typography not only elevates the aesthetic appeal of your design, but also enhances communication impact, ensuring that your message is not only seen, but also felt. 
third design element I want to cover is the color palette. Setting up a color palette. Color is a silent storyteller in every design. For creating a color palette, utilize a color wheel as your guide, exploring various arrangements to achieve harmony and balance. Embrace analog schemes for a seamless, soothing blend. Complementary pairings for striking contrast. And split complementary for a nuanced balance. And triadic combinations for vibrant diversity. Your choice of colors sets the tone of your visual narrative, creating a cohesive and, vi and visually pleasing experience for your audience. Emphasizing key elements. In design, not all elements are created equal. Strategic use of color emphasizes key components, directing the viewer's attention where it matters most. Think of color as a spotlight. Use it to eliminate call to action buttons, essential information or focal points within your layout, as you see in these examples. The style and mood. Colors are the emotional language of design, capable of evoking specific moods and conveying distinct styles. Deliberate color choices contribute to the overall aesthetic, influencing how your audience perceives and connects with your design. Whether you're aiming for a bold and energetic vibe a serene and calm ambience, or a playful and lively atmosphere. Your color palette plays up before the wall. It is important to choose colors that align with the personality of your message. 4. Layering. Layering adds depth to a design for visual interest. Think of layering as the magic wand that transforms your design from flat to fascinating. For example, a poster I created for the Museum of Natural History, where the text dances gracefully over a captivating photo. It's like peeling back layers from a story, making the design pop with life, creating a visual bond. Picture this, in that MONH poster, the text isn't just slapped on, it becomes part of the picture. It's like the title and the image are holding hands, telling everyone they belong together. This isn't just about making things look good, it's a clever way of saying, hey, these elements are connected. It's a secret sauce that ties everything together, making your design not just pretty, but purposeful. Number five, composition and balance. Balancing elements in design is much like orchestrating a visual symphony. Let's take a look at a poster I created for Hyperhive. In this poster, the title makes center stage at the top left, commanding attention. As your eyes gracefully move down, a vibrant background color sets an energetic tone, leading you to an image at the bottom. Now your gaze effortlessly sweeps to the top right where the logo holds its place with subtle authority. Every component plays a distinct role, contributing to the overall harmony. If the viewer's curiosity is piqued, they seamlessly follow the information text, strategically placed to provide more details. This visual journey concludes with a clear call to action, the website URL. In the Hyperhive poster, each element is thoughtfully arranged to create a sense of balance. The balancing act, Balance is the unsung hero that keeps your design standing tall. It's not just about placing elements, it's about distributing visual weight in a way that feels just right. Too much on one side and it feels lopsided. Too little and it loses impact. Achieving balance is like finding that sweet spot. A sweet spot that ensures your design is not just a collection of parts, but a cohesive and visually pleasing whole. Next thing I want to cover in composition and balance is white space or negative space. It's also important to use enough negative space or white space in your design. So there's room to breathe in your design. Negative space isn't the empty space, it's a canvas for your imagination to breathe. Take a look at the poster I crafted for you. It's a masterclass in using negative space. By letting the design breathe, I turn the spotlight on the title. It's not about what's there, it's about what's not there. Negative space isn't a void, it's a spotlight. Number six I want to cover. Number six is reference more. Building your reference. So seeking reference is like stocking up your creative backpack. The more the diverse references you collect, the richer your creative arsenal becomes. It's not about copying, it's about having a treasure trove of inspiration to draw from when a blank canvas awaits. 
every reference becomes a tool. You can use elements or combine elements from different references to generate ideas for a new design. Building a Pinterest. I think it's important to building a Pinterest. I have set up a Pinterest board where I've curated my own digital pool of layouts. Pinterest is a place where I immerse myself daily, but also on other websites, during work, and even in the moments of downtime. It's not just a collection of pretty pictures, it's a living mood board where I can go if I need some more inspiration. By doing the research and delve yourself into inspiration and being on the lookout for what is already out there, you will be ahead of the curve. And last but definitely not least is try new layouts every time. Break from the routine. Every project is a chance to break free from the ordinary. Embrace new layouts as your gateway to creative evolution. Push boundaries, step outside your comfort zone and watch how your design reads new heights. Also by trying new layouts, you stay ahead of the curve, setting trends rather than following them. Keep your design dynamic, fresh and always one step ahead. The key to unlocking your full potential lies in embracing new ideas and pushing creative boundaries. I challenge you to put these insights into practice today infusing freshness and innovation into every project. If you found value in this video, consider following this channel for more design tips. Until next time, happy designing.